Good evening, Living Word His Prayer family. It's good to see you all out tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you watching online, welcome on behalf of our pastors. Pastors Jimmy and Jennifer O'Farrell, it's good to have you with us this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see you guys. Father, we come before you tonight to give you the glory, the honor, the praise, Lord, because you deserve it, Lord, and there's no one like you, Father God. We came to worship you tonight, to adore you, Lord God, to give you all the praise, all the glory, and the honor, Father. Have your way through the word tonight that is spoken, Father, that it will fall on good soil, that our hearts and our ears will be open, Lord. And we give you the praise, and all of God's people said, Amen. Get up, 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 get up,
what I need, yes, she does. So why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need.
Each breath that I breathe in, each moment I'm given, God, if I live, I live for you. I love your presence, you're my obsession, God, if I live, I live for you. God, if I live, Give me a fresh, fresh fire I want what you desire I'm gonna burn for you Give me a fresh, fresh fire Give me a fresh, fresh fire I want what you again for you light a match and let it go light a match and let it go set a blaze of control I want that fire I want that fire light a match and let it go set a blaze of control I want the place of control I want that fire I want that fire light a match and let it go set the place of control
Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire, and I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire.
desperate for your presence. We're desperate for your presence. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We're desperate for your presence. We're desperate for your presence. Oh, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, some praise tonight. Amen. He's worthy, 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 worthy is He. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift Him up tonight. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Amen. Oh, our God is so good, church. Hallelujah. It's good to see you guys out here tonight, amen, joining with us to worship our Savior and our King, amen. Isn't he a good God all the time? Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to turn your attentions to the board, we have some. Hey, Living Word family, just want to remind you that our annual church picnic is right around the corner. It is April 20th at 1230 p.m. We'll be at Mesa Linda Park in the city of Victorville. We do have a sign-up sheet. Be sure to sign up. Be sure to invite someone, bring someone. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. We're going to fellowship. We're going to barbecue. We're going to have potato sack races. We're just going to have a, an afternoon full of fun. We can't wait to see you there. Hey, Living Word family, just want to remind you that conference is June 17th through the 20th. It's going to be at the Ontario Convention Center. The price is free, so be sure to mark the date. You're not going to want to miss out. I can't wait to see what God's going to do then.
Hope to see you there. Just a family reminder, our service times are every Sunday at 1045 with 10 a.m. prayer, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock with 630 prayer, and our nursery is available for all children ages 5 and under. We can't wait to see you all there. God bless you. Amen, amen. How's everybody doing tonight? Come on, amen. Excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight, amen. I know I'm excited. Come on, somebody. I pray that you guys came hungry and ready to receive from the Lord tonight, amen. We want to welcome you all out and those watching us through social media, amen. We welcome you guys tonight. I am going to share a couple of scriptures here tonight, amen. Uh, the one that we always share when it comes down to tithes and offering, amen. Uh, it's just one that really just tells us what the Lord is asking of us, amen. That's Malachi 3.10, amen. Um, and it says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw, throw open the floodgates and, of heaven and pour out so much blessings that you will not have room enough for it. Amen. This is an awesome scripture here, church. This is one of few times where the Lord says to test him. Amen. Come on. That's not something that you hear often and through the scriptures of God saying, test me. Put me to the test on this. Here is saying, he's saying, look, I want you to test me. I want you to see that I am faithful, that I am a good God. Let me show you that I'll come through. I'm not going to be one that's going to say something and do another thing. Amen. He's one that if he says it, he's going to do it and he's going to provide. Amen. So here the scriptures just remind us to be faithful in our giving to the Lord. Amen. Uh, and, and this scripture is talking about bringing the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Back in the days, they made a living off of the grain, off the ground, off of the fruit, off of the, whatever it was, off of the livestock. That's how they made their living. Amen. So when they brought their tithe, they brought it in as far as grains and and and. and, and fruits, vegetables, and, and livestock, amen, and that's how they paid their tithe, amen, they brought that unto the Lord, amen, we are in a new era now, we don't live off of grain and, and whatever, so the Lord says, out of your finances, amen, when, when you get paid, bring me what belongs to me, bring me my tithe, so that there may be enough, what, food in his house, that there may be enough enough food in his house, in other words, saying, so that the word of God can continue to go forward, amen, your, your faithfulness, your giving, your tithes and offering allows the gospel to keep going forward, and it keeps us um, being able to preach the, the, the sound doctrine, amen, and it allows to get people to get saved and to know about Jesus Christ, amen. I want to encourage you, church, if you haven't tried and tested God in this, test him, amen. You know, God's a God that requires us to step out in faith. He's, he's a God that moves by faith. The Bible says that it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith is everything, church, when it comes down to God. You want to unlock the heart of God? Step out in faith. When you step out in faith, God will meet you. God will show you that he's a faithful God, amen. He's a supernatural God. He doesn't operate in the natural like I shared on Sunday. He, he's not governed by the natural. He's a supernatural God. So when we're trying to reason and we're trying to understand and we're trying to get logic and we're trying to bring logic into the way God operates, we're just going to get stuck and we're going to get upset and we're going to get overwhelmed and we're going to say, man, this makes no sense. How do I test you? In other words, you're saying, God, I need to put my, my tithe or my finances up first and I got to trust that you're going to meet and you're going to multiply and you're going to stretch. That doesn't make no sense, God. It doesn't make sense. How about, you know, if, 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 if maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that has bad thinking. Come on, someone. Maybe, maybe it, you guys are like the way I used to think. Well, God, how about you bring your half first or your portion first? And once I see your portion, then I'll release my portion. God, don't work that way. That's not faith. Amen. Faith is you saying, God, here it is. God, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to give what belongs to you, God. I'm going to trust you to do what you need to do. A couple of weeks ago, church, I'm not going to lie. We were short on rent again. We were short on rent. And I had to pay internet. I had to pay bills. Or else we had no internet. We went one service. We didn't have live stream, whatever it was. It's because we had no internet. So I was like, all right, so it's going to be what it's going to be. And I remember I sat in the back office. And I said, Lord, if I pay the internet, we're going to be that much shorter again. Even that, that much shorter. And on all I said, I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. You say you're faithful, God. You said that you're a good God and that you'll meet every one of our needs and that we will not lack in your house, God. I said, I'm going to pay this, Lord, and you're going to, make the, you're going to meet the need. And I paid it. I said, by faith, God, I'm paying this, and you're going to cover this and whatever else needs to be covered. And I paid it, church, and I did what I had to do, pay whatever the bills I had to pay for the church. And let me tell you, I sent the rent, the rent money this, this, uh, this morning to the, to the landlord. It all just started coming in on its own. I, I, I would get alerts on my iPad. I'm like, what the heck? And... 
people dropping off the tithe, people doing whatever it was they're doing. I was like, oh man, it's crazy. I checked the balance, like I could pay the rent. Thank you, Jesus. I paid it, paid it on time. Amen. So that's the way God works. When you trust him and say, God, I'm going to depend on you. I'm going to trust you, God. He'll make a way. He'll, he'll meet you there, church. Believe me, that 90% can go a lot further than your 100% without God in it. Let me tell you, man, the Bible talks about holes with pockets. Not talking about literal pockets. Come on, someone with holes in them. Because I used to go in there like, well, my pockets are cool. They don't have any holes, so I don't got to worry about it. Amen. But what he's talking about when we don't trust God in that, in that aspect, our pockets are, are the things where our money just goes into. Have you ever noticed when, when you go through that funk, when you stop trusting God, things start to break down out of nowhere. And your car needs repair. And then this just happened. And now that other thing happened. You start to see things start to accumulate and your money just starts to go. That's the holes of pockets that God's, just talk, that God's talking about. Amen. Trust God. Put him to the test. Luke 16, 10 says this, and I'll stop with that. It says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Trust the Lord, church. I promise you, man. You can't outgive him. He's a faithful God. He's an on-time God. It might not come today. It might not come tomorrow. But when you are in that place, between a rock and a hard place, and you start to cry out, God, I need you to meet this need, you'll see that God will start to just do what he has to do. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Come on. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, tonight, Lord, for your faithfulness. Holy Spirit, we know that you are here tonight, Lord God. Father, we pray, Father God, over the speakers tonight, first and foremost, Lord. Anoint their lips for service today, Lord. Let their words come forth with an anointing, Lord God, that breaks yokes and breaks shackles, Father God. Father, we also thank you for this time of, uh, of offering, Lord God, where we can bring you our best, Father God. Where we can bring you, Father God, a gift out of sacrifice, Lord God. A gift, Lord God, with a cheerful heart that would just reach your heart, Father God. Father, bless the cheerful gift today father bless those lord tonight god who aren't able to give father god lord open doors for them lord god show them lord god that you are a faithful god father we love you we exalt you father god we ask this tonight in the mighty name of jesus christ and all of god's people said amen and amen come on let's give the lord some praise ushers you may go forward amen church let's get on our feet let's greet our neighbor amen Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I praise when outnumbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing. Come on. Let's give the Lord some praises. Come on. We serve a risen king. We serve the king of king, the king of glory. Come on. We serve a mighty God. Come on, somebody. Excited to be here with you guys tonight. Amen. I know God is on the move. That's Jacob, uh, youth minister Jacob's word, uh, slow slogan. God's on the move. Come on. Amen. I believe God is on the move. This Sunday we started a series. Amen. 
entitled, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. Atmosphere, thank you. Yes, we just started a series called Atmosphere, setting the atmosphere, man. And let me tell you, church, the atmosphere is everything. You set the right atmosphere, the Lord moves. Amen. When there's when the right atmosphere is set, there's no atmosphere, nothing happens. You guys remember back in the days when you guys were all disco ducks? Come on, somebody. Talking to Yanira here. Come on, somebody. Getting, getting jiggy in the dance floor. If you didn't set the right atmosphere, that was a boring party. You'd be sitting at the tables looking at the one person trying to make it happen. You're like, oh, man, they just need to sit down. Come on, somebody. Amen. But when the atmosphere was right... When it was set correctly, amen, it got everybody out there. When the music was right, when everything was right, it, just, it was just flowing. The house of God is the same thing. We got to get the atmosphere right. When the atmosphere is right, and then the spirit of God is, is free and is able to move and do what he needs to do, then that's when you start to walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. That's when you start to see the glory of God just come down, amen, and you start to just experience heaven here on earth, amen. It's all about the atmosphere. And Sunday I shared how we control the atmosphere we set the temperature amen and i i told god i said god i don't want to be the one that takes someone else's blessing because i'm not willing to set the atmosphere because i had a bad day or i had a bad week i said god i, I want to leave that at the altar god i want to leave it at the door lord because it's not about me it's about somebody else god i don't want to be selfish i don't want to be all about me but i want to be about the person lord that needs something from you that needs to hear from you god that needs a breakthrough from you god that needs a healing god so we're going to be talking about atmosphere man until we set the atmosphere because i know god is doing things in this place amen i know god is moving and miracles are taking place amen i'm hearing testimonies i'm i'm just seeing god's glory take place and i know there's more still amen and we just allow god to do what god has to do amen I'm going to dismiss, I think we have one of the kiddos here. If you guys want, you, Mr. Jimmy is going to be in the back. He has, he has an activity for you guys, amen. And then uh, we'll get going here with, with service this morning. You guys excited this evening? Come on. Come on. We awake tonight? Come on. Hallelujah. You guys think it's hot down there? Woo, it's hot up here. Come on, somebody. I was like, oh, man, Lord, come on. You guys are dismissed back there with you. It's Pastor Jimmy, amen. Um, this, uh, I'm just going to share a little bit of the scripture of where I was speaking on just to give you guys a little bit on atmosphere, amen, and then I'm going to get our guest speakers. We got a couple of guest speakers here tonight, amen. We got a couple of them, one coming all the way from, I don't know what city my brother lives in, but I think he lives here in, in Hesperia, amen, all the way from the city of Hesperia, amen. And then we got another one all the way from the city of Victorville coming out, amen, to bring the word of God, amen. But, you know, on Sunday I shared in the book of, of Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, and then I skip to 35 and 42, and, and this is uh, when Jesus is asked to heal uh, and heal the daughter of one of those, uh, of one of the, the of, of Jairus is his name, the daughter of Jairus, she was sick, amen, and she needed healing, amen, and while Jesus was being told about the, the healing that needed to take place, the young little girl died, amen, and the, the servants came and says, don't even bother the master, the young, the young girl is dead, just don't even bother him, and Jesus overheard and it says the young lady isn't dead, she's only sleeping, amen. The Bible continues to on as you read the, the story, gets to the house, amen, and as he gets to the house, he hears and sees all this commotion. Come on, somebody. They were all in the feelings, they were all in the flesh, they were not in the Holy Ghost, and they weren't they weren't trusting God. Amen. So he sees the commotion, hears all the chaos going on, and he doesn't ask for the daughter. He doesn't say, Show me to the daughter. He walks in, he assesses the situation, notice that the atmosphere isn't right for a miracle because there was too much unbelief, too much chaos, and too much commotion going on. So what does Jesus do? He clears the room out, kicks everybody out, in other words. He wasn't, come on, I'm pretty sure it wasn't in a nice way. Guys, would you please leave the room? Guys, guys, I need you guys to empty the room right now because because I, I need to do something. I don't think it was like that. I think he walked in there. And he probably rebuked them. He rebuked them. He probably says, stop. What the heck is going on in here? Why are you, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Come on, you're near your nose. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Who are you? Why are you even in here? What's, you, 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 you guys all need to leave. Get out. Get out. Everybody, I'm pretty sure it was something crazy like that. Where it was something where he cleared out the, the, the room. And he only let the parents in and his three disciples and he knew that that's what we needed needed to happen for the atmosphere to be set amen because there was enough there that believed for a miracle 
The Bible says when any two or three are gathered in his name, that there he is what in the midst. He don't need a crowd. He just needed two or three to gather there that would trust and believe to set the right atmosphere. And that's what happened. The Bible says he calls the little girl, says, little girl, get up or awake, awaken little girl. And she wakes up. The miracle takes place. He set the atmosphere. Amen. The word atmosphere is simply this. Amen. The definition to atmosphere, atmosphere is a surrounding influence or an environment. When the atmosphere is right, it influences our surroundings. Amen. And it's, and it's contagious. An atmosphere that is set with the presence of God, with the glory of God, is contagious. That's why, if you know, as you walk into a church service and there's a glory moving and there's just a flow of the Spirit of God, no matter how much of a heathen we may be when we walk through those doors, there is something that captivates you. There's something that draws you, something that breaks you, something that calls you to come to a place of repentance. There's something that takes place, and it's because there is an atmosphere for the glory of God there to be manifested and to do what it needs to do. So an atmosphere is contagious. An atmosphere will move and, and change a circumstance and change an environment and will bring a place to, uh, will bring the people to a place of humility and it'll bring a, a people to a place where they will cry out to God. Amen. So we want to set the atmosphere, church. We want to be atmosphere setters. Amen. We, we want to remind you. I want to remind you I shared on Sunday. I encourage you to read the, uh, listen to the message. But God responds to atmosphere. God will respond to the atmosphere. God responds to where he's welcome. He's not welcome. He ain't going to show up. I don't know about you, but I don't go to a party that I'm not invited to. Because the minute you walk in, you're like the stick in the mud. You're like... Who's this guy? Who invited him? Who, he, who is he? How, why is he here? And it's awkward. I've been in one of those situations once or twice in my life, and I'm sitting there saying, like, dude, I can't wait to leave, but now it's too awkward to get up and leave because I'm already here, so now you got to act like you want to be there, but you really don't want to be there. God responds to atmosphere. It's the same thing. When the atmosphere is right, God will move, and he will have his way, man. So tonight, man, we're going to continue on the topic of atmosphere, man. We're going to continue to... To teach on the atmosphere, amen. Our first speaker tonight, amen. Uh, I, I, my brother, uh, Reynaldo, amen, all the way from the city of, you're in Hesperia, right, brother? All the way from the city of Hesperia. Came from Fresno, but now in the city of Hesperia, man, let's welcome up tonight, amen. Come on, my brother. Here, I'm on my stuff here. Come on. There you go. Uh, I'm a little bit older than Pastor, so he has these gadgets and stuff. Like, I brought my Bible and some notes. Not to be a thermometer, but man, it's hot. Hot already. That's how I got my bed. All right, you guys. So, uh, my name is Ray. And initially, when uh, the pastor had asked me to speak last week, oh man, my first thought was run. <laughs> the last guy who did that, I think, got swallowed by a whale. And I got to work tomorrow, so I don't have more sick days. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> um, changing the atmosphere. Okay? Now, a lot of thoughts went through my head as I was trying to decide what I wanted to speak about. But in the end, it was God who said, this is what you're gonna speak about. And that was all the way until last, this morning. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, how does this even, how does this even like go with what I'm trying to talk about? But the, at, the, the, the change of atmosphere he was telling me to speak about was the atmosphere of our hearts, right? Okay? Where are we? Where are we in our hearts? What is the atmosphere of our hearts, right? So the story that he brought to me was the, the raising of Lazarus. And I'm like, well, that's, how am I going to do this? You know, because that story goes to show, you know, the power that God has over life and death, right? And that's, a, that's a, looking through the Bible, I'm like, you know, I'm not no Bible scholar or anything like that. You know, but I said, God, give me the words, please. You know, the, the story of Lazarus had different atmospheres, and this is what I'm saying, uh, different heart atmospheres, right? Okay, so they had just come from, um, they had just come from yeah, Jerusalem, yes? And he was about to get stoned, right? Stoned, not stoned by rocks, not stoned, yeah. <laughs> okay, and they wanted to arrest him, but Jesus took off, you know, and then we come to the story of Lazarus, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it real quick, okay, in case some, some of you don't know. It's a, it's a pretty long story, but, man, I'm going to tell you what. When I go through the Bible, I find new things all the time. And some of these things, I'm like, I never heard of this. You know, where have I been all my life, you know? <laughs> all right, so a man named Lazarus was sick. 
He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Now, this is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with their hair. And that's another awesome story after that. But her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters were sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So, although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, keep that in mind, okay? He stayed where he was for the next two days. I want you to keep that in mind, okay? Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea, okay? But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going to go there again? And Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day during the day. People can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world, but at night there's danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. And the disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. And they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant that Lazarus had died. So he plainly told him, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there for now. Now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm just going to kind of go back. So this scene was set, you know. God used this for his son to glorify his name, man. So even though Jesus loved Mary, Lazarus, and Martha, and he said, I'm just going to wait. And when I kind of read this, I was like, man, that's kind of messed up. Man. Don't. Why are you waiting? Like, you can do this from where you are. You can just speak, you know, come alive. No, and that's the power of God. He can just be come alive, right? All right. So, um, the set, the 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 atmosphere was set, right? And so the Lord knew what He had to do. Jesus knew what He had to do. He had to wait. You know, He had to wait, even though He loved these three, because He knew that if He went and just performed a miracle like He's been doing, people were going to see what they were seeing. So He had to wait until. Um, Lazarus actually died to show a miracle and that's some of us that's that's our hearts you know like when are you going to perform my miracle when you when when I believe you but but I want to see more because I'm right there Lord like I'm right there just one more thing you know and we keep asking for more and more and more and every time we ask for something and he gives it to us right away we're like every time oh let's just pray God's going to give it to you and I've I used to think that just, you know, in the beginning when I first came to God and I would ask for something, it was because I was genuinely asking for him to save me. And when he did, I was like, oh, this God's kind of cool. Let me, he's giving me everything I want, you know? But then I would get it and I'd run off and do my thing again, okay? And expect the same thing every single time. So it came to the time where we had to wait. I had to wait. We have to wait. He sets that atmosphere, you know? so he can change it and by doing that he sometimes we cannot change the atmosphere we have to endure the atmosphere right so he didn't go right away he didn't go right away because he knew there was some non-belief there you know god knows everything he already knew that lazarus was going to die he already knew that people didn't believe okay so he made them wait okay the disciples had uh the attitude of fear, well, we're gonna go back there, we're gonna get stoned, like we're all gonna die, you know? This is what I got from it, okay? But it'd be, if you're gonna go die, we're gonna go die with you, you know? That's how I was like, yeah, if you're gonna go get jumped, we'll go back you up, bro. And then just sitting there watching everybody, like, you know what I mean? That's what I was like, oh, these guys are just saying that because, you know, what if there's that chance, you know? So they're like, oh, well, I'm going on in the story here. Thomas named nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, like I just said, let's go to and die with Jesus. And when Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. I, I questioned how far that was because they had to send somebody, right? And I'm like, man, he stayed for two days, but how long did it take for them to get there, you know? So... The people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss, and when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. 
but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. So I questioned that also, you know, and, and when I say I question things in the Bible, I question because I want to know, you know, because when we question and we seek, we're going to find truth, right? So God wants us. To, to probe, to ask questions, to figure it out, because in the end, he, we're going to find what we're looking for in him, right? Okay, but we've got to look, and sometimes we've got to go off on our own to do that, you know? So, he knew before he got there what they were enduring. Like I said, he's all-knowing, right? We all know that. He knew what they were enduring. Let me get my notes out real quick. Why did he wait? So, they thought, as soon as they heard, because he loved them so much, he would go right away, you know? But when, you know, when you love somebody, sometimes it's not the best thing to give them everything they want, you know? Or to be there all the time. We gotta let them wait to show them how much we love them, you know? Now lets us endure many things, but he also promises to get us through those things, right? So, when we have to endure the atmosphere that we're in, that produces faith when we are praying, you know, and, and God will give us the things that we need to endure that atmosphere. And when we're able to endure the atmosphere, we're able to change the atmosphere of where we're at, you know? So our hearts, where are we at and where are we at in our hearts? And that's what I want to speak about. Your atmosphere is going to change if your heart is set at the right temperature, right? You need to, you need to search yourself and ask yourself, where are you? Is this atmosphere going to change if I'm this way? And you know how you are, you guys. I know how I am. I'm super hard-headed. Sometimes I'm prideful. You know, like, I have to stop and be like, this, this situation has not changed because I haven't changed my attitude. You know? If I continue to fight with you, then I'm blocking the blessing from God. You know, he wants to change the atmosphere, but I don't let him change the atmosphere, right? So, Excuse me. She went to meet him, and Lord, if you only had been here, my brother would not have died. We read that like, man, where were you? I'm like, an old girlfriend, like, you know, where were you? Jesus is like, yeah, you know? So <laughs> he said, um, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises the last day. Martha did have faith. She, her, her atmosphere in her heart was a faith. She knew. She knew. She knew what would happen at the end. When we die, we would go up with the Lord, right? We'd be resurrected with the Lord. So there was a different atmosphere there, you know? The atmosphere with the disciples was like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. We should go, but, you know? And then God's atmosphere was set. He already knew everything that was going to happen. But it had to be set first so he can go change the atmosphere of everybody else. Right? So, she said, I am the resurrection and life. And anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Okay? If you believe that in your heart, your atmosphere is set. You're going to be able to change the atmosphere anywhere you go. People are going to see that in you. Right? But if you walk around with the heart and heart, and with the bipolar attitude, you know, you're gonna get a bunch of different atmospheres all at once, you know? So, <laughs> so let's examine our hearts, you guys, okay? So, um, he said the Lord allowed this to happen to change the atmosphere, right? Yes, Lord, she told him, I have always believed you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God, the one who's come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary, and she called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him, and Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people were at the house consoling Mary, saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there, and when Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been there, my brother would not have died. And with those words, you know, where were you? Saying, you must be, Mary, you must be Martha's sister, <laughs> you know? Uh, 
But when Jesus saw her weeping and saw other people wailing with her, a deep anger, I read this in different forms, a deep anger, um, a troubled heart, and I don't think it was an anger. I think it was a compassion, you know? And everybody, I'm, I'm sure you've read the story, you know, I, I want to say, like, I'm new, but I'm not new. And when you started the series, it's like when you buy a car and you've never seen that car before, and then you buy it and then it's everywhere. When you set, set the atmosphere the entire week, everything was like, oh, God, you set that up. Lord, you set that up. You set up this atmosphere. And you know what? It was for his glory. I'm going to tell you that much, you guys. I had so many wonderful things going on. I got the opportunity to speak to my brother. Four hours just talking about God. I haven't talked to my brother like that in ever. And we're, he's 30, I'm 40, 22. And... You know, it gave me a better understanding and it gave him an understanding and it brought him back to, I didn't know that he had preached before my brother, my little brother. I didn't know a lot of things about him. You know, I didn't know he got the opportunity to do that. You know, and it brought us closer together. And God wanted that. That was an appointment because he was going to bring somebody, you know, and that conversation would not have happened had she been there, right? At work. Mm. I don't want to talk about work because I know some of my coworkers might be watching right now. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, there was such an atmosphere of chaos and distress, and uh, I, I let that consume me. I did. I let that consume me, and I had to ask myself, like, where's your heart? Because you, you weren't really like this before, but you let all this consume you, and you let it drive you to be the same way, you know? I had to be compassionate, because there are people, just like the people who just showed up right now to console Mary, they didn't know, they didn't know Jesus, they didn't know the miracles that he could do. They didn't believe him until they saw this. And this is why this needed to be set up. I had to shut my mouth sometimes, and that is hard for me to do. When I'm at work, man, it is. And I had to let God take control of the situations that I wanted to control. I had to change my heart. I had to say, God, if it were up to me, man, we'd be boxing everybody up in here. You know, but we can't be doing that at work. Lord, we got to let you take this, this fight, Lord. I'm going to let you have this fight. And even though I know what's going on, so do you. You know more than I do. So take this, take my heart, make it yours, and whatever happens, I'm gonna trust you, right? Originally, my, my, my deal was on the storm, you know, but the storm, you know, God calms every storm, and sometimes it takes years, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we gotta wait, we're not gonna get the things we want right away, because how is that gonna produce faith, you know, right? We continue to pray and pray, and then one day he reveals it to us. And it may not be the way that we thought it was going to be revealed. But he will reveal that to us, right? <clears throat> Jesus had stayed outside the village. Um, I'm sorry. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. And he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? They told him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Jesus wept because he knows everything and every feeling and beyond what we can ever imagine. He knows our hearts, he knows our sadness, our emotions, what we go through, and it hurts him too, you know? It hurts him to see us that way, and that's why he doesn't want us to stay that way. So he does want to change the atmosphere for us. He wants us to be atmosphere changes for other people, right? Some of us are holding on to a lot of things that are not allowing us to change the atmosphere. So we stay stuck. We stuck, we stay, like when you said that we should be thermostats, we either stay stuck really hot or really cold, you know? And that was me before. Sometimes I'm on, I was on fire for God and sometimes I was so cold and so far away, you know? I don't wanna be stuck so far away. I wanna be on fire all the time. The right fire, you know? <laughs> Holy Spirit fire, not fire fire, okay? That's not the good fire. Uh, when Jesus saw, um, they told him, Lord, come and see. And they're just like, here we go, you guys. I'm about to do this miracle. I already know. Then Jesus, 
come and see. Then Jesus wept. Then people were standing nearby and said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Yes, he could have. They didn't know that. Their atmosphere in their heart was of disbelief, unbelief. You know, I wonder what they thought. Like, who's this guy, you know? Jesus, they, you know what, what baffles me is that they got to see the actual mirrors. How could, how could you not see something like that that's right in front of your face? And we live by faith, and I believe everything the Lord says. I don't, I don't need to see him perform that. I can just read about it, and I believe it, you know? And miracles just aren't raising, you know, people from the dead because, you know, or stepping out and walking on water, you know? Because I would have tried that already. I probably would have drowned, and, you know, but like, sorry. But, um... You know, being this story, him being dead, it, it also talks about like, uh, to me, it brought out like, sometimes we're spiritually dead, right? And only Jesus can come resurrect that. And he can do that through us. We don't understand that power, but we do have authority to do that. Like you said, Pastor, last week, we have the authority to do, to do that. But like I keep saying, the atmosphere of our heart has to be right. It has to be a one of belief and a faith and love you know so the people were standing there by said see how much you loved him and some said this man healed a blind man couldn't he have kept Lazarus from they only knew what he was about to do Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb saddened however you want to you know interpret that a cave with the stone rolled across the entrance roll the stone aside Jesus told them roll the stone aside but Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. And Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Right? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to the heaven and said, he didn't ask him for anything, right? He said, thank you, Father. You know, thank you, Father, for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here that they still so that they still believe that they will believe you sent me then jesus shouted lazarus come out and the dead man came out his hands and feet bound in the grave clothes his wrapped his face wrapped in head cloth jesus told him unwrap him and let him go and many of the people who were with mary believed in jesus when they saw this happen now roll the stone aside roll the stone aside <sighs> to me i was like okay that was putting whatever is blocking our hearts from changing our attitudes, our mentality, anything that's blocking us from God and his blessings. And we have to roll that aside so we can see the glory that is about to come through, the miracle that he is about to make happen, you know? And the miracle was life. We're not going to see life if we have a stone heart. We're not going to see that life, right? So when we remove that stone, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stink, right? Four days. <laughs> a lot of ugliness, you know? But God doesn't care about that. He does not care about that. He, if, if he did, he might not have come. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, he does not care about that. He was there to remove and to show you and to show everybody else what he could do. And that would glorify his father, right? Isn't that what we want to do? Right? Where are you? Where are you today, guys, in your atmosphere? I know that I had a bad attitude. I have sometimes a bad attitude, you know? And I really had a bad one for a while. But I knew that I had to let God remove that stone. And I had to let out all that nastiness. And I had to have the heart of Christ, you know? And to do that, I had to endure a lot of things during my life. That is why I feel the way I feel today. I, I have always grown up in church. Man, my grandmother was an amazing woman, and I thank her for that gift of presenting the Lord to me. You know, I thank her for that, and I didn't know that I would lead to this, to this day, even though it took 
this long, God already knew what was going to happen. He allowed me to endure. He allowed me to endure that atmosphere, and he gave me the tools to get through that, to get through it. You know, so we can't we can't have the attitude of where were you, Lord? Where were you? And sometimes I did, and sometimes we do. But we have the attitude of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I wish I would have thought that my entire. I think that now, and I thank Him now for those things that happened because they brought me to this place where I just want to glorify his name. I want to set that atmosphere. I want to be that light for people, you know? And if people can see the horrible things that I've done to people, <laughs> my real, my, the people who really know me and see the wretched person that I was at some points, they could see the work of the Lord right? Because nobody else was going to change me. Not no one. You know? Every, my, my family could love me all they want, my church, my friends, but it was only the love of God that was able to remove that stone from my heart to change my atmosphere. So we've got to see where we are, folks, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, church, family, I don't know why that, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't know why that came out like that. So, <coughs> excuse me. If we believe that God is going to do something great in our lives, He is. We can't have the mentality of He's not, right? It's just, it's just the atmosphere of your heart and your mind. And that's what we have to change. And that's what's going to bring people closer to God, guys. <laughs> all right? So um, I wrote down all kinds of notes that I didn't even use, you know, because, like I said, when he said set the atmosphere, it set the atmosphere to open up my Bible more than I have been doing. And that led me to read a, a bunch of things that I didn't know. And when I got to one story, I'm like, but what happened before that? Oh, man, but what happened before that? You know? And it's like, <laughs> you know? And so this, this blessing, I wasn't going to run from it. And I hope that somebody received my message the way God would, intended it to come out. Because to me, it just sounded like this. You know? God loves mess, right? Because he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called, right, Pastor? <laughs> That's, that came to my mind. <laughs> so, do you see all the different atmospheres that were here? Fear. I want to believe. Some would disbelieve. But when God showed up like he always does, he changes any and every atmosphere every single time to something good. There's no stories in here that are bad, you know, because it was all for the glory of God and it still is and it always will be, right? So this is why sometimes when we can't set the atmosphere, we can do we endure the atmosphere so that later we can change the atmosphere right so don't think that god will ever leave us in the midst of you know our pain and our suffering because that is going to be used for something right folks folks uh, so thank you i think that's where i'm gonna stop here i just want i hope that my message came through and i thank you for listening guys thank you Thank you for your pastor. Thanks, thanks. Dang, Brother Ray tore it up. Come on. Uh, before I get any further, before I even continue, um, I'm going to pray a sin and we're going to jump right in. Amen. Oh, Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, that you move and that you have your way in this house, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, that you set a fire, Father God, that you take all of my words and that you make them your words tonight, Father God. 
that you take my thoughts and you make them yours, Father God, that you remove all of me and make it all of you, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, and ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Someone told me I had my work badge on, so I took it off. So, you know, you guys don't know where I'm at. Come on. Amen. But Brother Ray was reading from the, from the last passage, and I'm going to pick up right where he left off, basically. Come on. And in the last passage, Jesus was saying, you have such little faith, if you would just believe, Lazarus would still be here. Come on. So if any of y'all are taking notes tonight, I want to talk about the atmosphere of faith. I want to talk about what God does in faith. Come on. Let me tell you, man, this last month was the, one of the roughest months of my life. Come on. And, and God and the enemy, whoever it is, come on. Testing my faith so much. Come on. And let me tell you. Uh, I'm going to read the same passage that Pastor read, Matthew 9, 18 through 25. And it says, as Jesus was saying this, the leader of the synagogue came and kneeled before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but you can bring her back to life again. And if you would just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just, went, just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe. For she thought, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. And Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. Come on. Brother Ray said to her now to come on. If you can see it, then you can believe it. Then it's yours. Come on. If you can have enough faith to just see and believe that God is doing something, he's doing it. Come on. That's why I say God is on the move. Even when you don't feel it, if I say it, I'm going to believe it. Come on. And then God's moving. Come on. Just be encouraged. And then when Jesus arrived at the, uh, at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Come on. Now here comes the bride. They heard the death one. Come on. And he said, get out, he told them. Come on. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. Come on. He said, come on. You all sound asleep. She's snoring right there. Come on. She's done. She's done so. She's on a good sleep at that. Come on. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, however, Jesus went in and, and looked and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. Come on. Let me tell you, God was just showing me so many different things. Like I said, I've been tested so much on, on my faith in this season. Come on. But there's something that stood out. He said, and when he arrived, he saw that there was a noisy crowd. Come on, let me tell you, when there's an atmosphere of faith, things are going to get noisy. Come on. When it comes to testing your faith, things are going to get noisy. Voices are going to be heard all the way around. Come on. But you got to be able to say, get out. Get out. That's it. That's done. Come on. Let me tell you, if you're going to be able to change the atmosphere, you got to let some things out. Come on. you got to let things out of your life, and you got to bring it back to when it was just you and God. Come on. Let me tell you, I'm going to give you a little bit of stories, and I'm going to bring it back to my five points. Come on. It all started when I took my leave. Come on. The enemy hits right when, right when you have time to think. Come on. So I took my leave, and, and I, the baby was born. Come on. The greatest thing that could happen. Come on. And, and just after not even 24 hours of the baby being born, the baby got taken to ICU. And uh, me and my wife, we sat there, and we were in ICU for five to six days or something like that, almost seven days. Um, but through it all, we didn't tell nobody. We didn't even tell our parents because I sat with my wife, and I said, we got to come in and, into faith. This isn't a thing that we bring everybody in. This is a me and you thing, and we got to have faith, and we got to pray to believe that God is willing. Come on, it doesn't matter what the enemy thinks. It doesn't matter. I had so many voices in my head. The enemy was hitting me again because I had one, someone, someone tell me that my kids would be cursed. So I'm like, God, is this, is this happening? And I remember I had to sit there and I had to say, this is a thing with me and God right now. Ray, we got to sit here and we got to pray because this is me and God. This is you and God. This is us and God. And we got hit, you know, come on. The baby got taken by the ambulance, I, I, NICU, here we go. Come on, we packed our bags and onto the NICU. Come on, and it was the hardest thing because you just had your baby, you were holding her forever, and now you got to let it back, and you can only have visitation hours to see your own kid. Come on. And I was like, all right, all right, that's okay. Then I, I didn't get paid through my whole leave, I, I, but I'm going to come back to that. So then I started to get hit again. I was like, man, I haven't got a paycheck in over a month and a half. Oh, dang, what's going to happen? So then I, I was starting to get hit on faith again. I was like, man, God, what the heck? Come on, God, you, only you can make a move. I didn't, even, I didn't even let the enemy shake me. And I said, God, that's okay. We're going to keep moving. God, we're going to keep moving. Come on. And the enemy was just hitting and hitting and hitting. And I just felt like, man, God, 
what the heck, what the heck, you know? So then finally, I want to talk about the good things that God did through it all to, to keep me remaining in faith. Come on. Come on. So I, I remember me and my dad, we went there on, on the one of the final nights that the baby was in, in the NICU. And me and my dad, we went there and we prayed. Come on. We prayed and we, we prayed our hearts out. Come on. And, and God moved through that and the baby was released 24 hours later. Come on. Because when you stand in faith and you let things out of the room and you keep it back to when it was just you and God, God moves. Come on, through my leave, I got a text from my boss that I got a raise that it comes into effect Sunday and I didn't even work. I was like, all right, well, thank you, God, because I know what I'm coming back to. And I was like, well, God, I don't know what I'm going to do about my pay. I just got a letter in the mail yesterday that I'm getting a check for $4,000 from my leave that I didn't even have. And I was like, man. Thank you, Jesus. You're moving. You're moving. Come on. But you had to keep things out. Come on. You can't bring everything in because one, come on, when the bird sees there, man, someone's going to snatch it. Someone's going to take it. Come on. And you got to keep it back to the atmosphere when it was you and God. Come on. And then I said, all right, me, me and Ray at this point, I was like, I already knew I had a raise. I already knew the money was coming in. I said, all right, come on. Well, let's look at a car. I told my wife, let's look at a car. We looked at all kinds of cars, everything that we can look at. And, and we came to the conclusion together, me and her, that wanted another Camaro. I don't know why, but that's what we prayed on. That's what we believed on the next day. Same thing, me and her, we took off with the baby, went all the way down to Corona, and we picked up a new car, but we just, we just stepped out. Come on. We just believed in faith that God can do it. I don't know how it's going to get paid, but I know who can. Come on, I know my God can supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I said, God, I can't ask for another raise unless I raise the bar. Come on. God, I can't ask you to do more unless I pick it up. Come on. And I said, God, you got to move now. Come on. Because, man, if I get too comfortable, then I'm going to forget who my faith is in. Come on. I got to raise it up. God, okay, now I'm back to floating. God, you got to provide. Come on. But let me tell you, when you don't allow the world to move you and you take things out, God moves in that room. Come on, because it says one day he kicked them out. He told them to get out. Come on. It says the girl isn't dead. She's only asleep because now the people that got to stay in got to get educated. Come on. Because when you have the faith to believe, you get to stay in the room. When you have the faith to say, you know what, I'm not going to move, no matter what the enemy says, then God says, she's only asleep. The things that you have fear of are only at rest, but you got to wake them up tonight. The things that aren't moving are moving, but you got to wake it up. Come on. you got to wake it up. Come on. And Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. Come on. Let me tell you. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus says, I say to you, if you have faith even the size of a mustard seed, come on. You can tell your mountain to move, and it will move. Come on. Let me tell you, it doesn't, make, it doesn't take much, church. Come on. We believe that, that we're going to get Starbucks every day, and we make sure we go get it. Come on. But we have that not even a mustard seed faith that God can provide what he's doing or that God can set a fire. Come on. It doesn't take much, church. Come on. I, I had never seen a mustard seed until my dad brought it to me one time. I was like, dude, that's it. That's it. The faith of that can move mountains. Come on. The faith of that can tell things to move and it goes. Come on. Let me tell you, that's when the atmosphere changed and that's when it transformed. Because it might be impossible for you and I, but nothing's impossible for my God. Come on. And that's why it says faith comes by hearing the word of God. But it also says that we got to move it because faith without works is dead faith. Come on. When things stop moving, it starts to die. When the atmosphere stops moving in your life, we start to sound sleep. Come on. We start to sound sleep like the lady was. Come on. So I'm going to get to my five points, Brother Ray. He tore it up. I'm just here to close it up. Come on. So he already cut the womb. I'm here to stitch it up and close it out. Come on. Let me tell you. So my five points tonight, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Come on. When you have an atmosphere of faith or an atmosphere in general in your life, it brings freedom. When you allow God to bring an atmosphere in the church, in your life, and everything you do, it brings freedom. Come on. In John 8, 36, it says, if the, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be in free. Indeed. Come on. Let me tell you, when you bring in that atmosphere, every morning, I got to get up and I got to bring that atmosphere. I got to drive to work and say, God, I don't know which one I'm working with today, but God, you know the characteristics we do with that work. But God... Let me tell you, bring freedom into whoever I work with. God, bring a peace into whatever I bring in. Because let me tell you, when you bring God down, man, only God can move. Come on. And then we get the bipolar things like Brother Raymond was saying. You get some bipolar people like, you were angry yesterday. Come on. But let me tell you, the next thing that, you're, that, you're, that your atmosphere will bring out is it brings action. Come on. 
Let me tell you, when you don't have an atmosphere, when you don't have that fire no more, you stop moving. You stop having action. Come on. That's why it says faith without works is dead. When you stop believing, when you stop having faith and things get too comfortable, you stop moving. Come on. You stop working. Come on. I put right here, real faith gets involved, but faith must be active. Real faith will get involved, but it's got to be active. Come on. I put right here, your situation will change when you exercise your faith. Come on. Things will start to change when you start to believe that God is moving. Come on. When you start to believe that God is doing something. Come on. My point number three today, if you guys are taking notes, come on. The atmosphere brings revelation. The atmosphere brings revelation. Come on. James 1.6 says, wisdom is given to those who ask in faith. Wisdom is given to those who ask in faith. You want a deeper relationship? You want a deeper atmosphere with God? Ask in faith, God, what is it that you want to hear from me, God? What wisdom do you want to drop into me? Come on. It says right here, wisdom is given to those who ask in faith. Ask in faith. Come on, God, I need my atmosphere. God, what wisdom do you want to bring to me? Ask in faith. Come on. My wisdom isn't always what it used to, what I thought it was. Come on. Point number four. Your atmosphere brings trust. The atmosphere of God will bring trust in your life. Psalms 37, 40 says, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. Come on. Doesn't say your homie is going to help you and deliver you. Your compa is going to help you and deliver you. It says the Lord will help you and deliver them. Come on. Come on. So it's saying right there, you got to bring all that trust, man. I don't know how to solve this problem. I don't know how to get through this at work. But God, I give it to you because you can do it all. I might not know how to do it all, but God, I give it to you and you give me all my strength. You give me all my trust. So when I give you my trust, you deliver it. Come on. Come on. That's why, man, I've never hit a home run in my life. I could lie to you and tell you I hit a bunch of them. I could, my dad see me. I got hit in the face with the baseball. I was far from hitting a home run. But let me tell you, when I gave it to God, he does the hitting for me. And he sends it out every single time. And I say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. God, I don't know what I can do. But when I bring it to you, you always bring the deliverance from my enemies. You bring the deliverance from everybody. Come on. The atmosphere, church, point number five. The atmosphere. If you want to know why, think back to your faith. God, why am I stuck? Your atmosphere, the atmosphere of God will bring your healing and your deliverance. God, why am I sick all the time? God, why am I going through this? Why is it always a pattern? Why can't I get better? Where is your faith, church? Because when I last I heard, when you tell that mountain to jump, it goes. Come on. When I get sick, I say, enemy, you have no hold on me. Sickness, infirmity, you have no hold on me. You, I'll let you, I'll give you two days, but you're going to be gone. Let me tell you, when you, do you want to know why you're sick and you're, and you're not delivered? You start asking God, take it away. Come on, where's your atmosphere, church? Come on, when you wanted that girl, you went with it. What's up, girl? And you were fighting with it. But when it comes to getting sick and it comes to a reason to running from God, we run. Come on, church. The atmosphere will bring your healing. Come on, James 5, 14 through 15 says, any sick, call on your elders, call on your leaders of the church, call on your pastor, and pray the prayer of faith, and it will save the sick and raise them up. You feel in a way? Call on pastor, call on the leaders, and bring the atmosphere down. You can't get to the atmosphere, bring it down. Come on. Bring it down. There's a song that says that. Bring them down. Bring them, bring them down. Come on. Bring God down. Bring the, bring the atmosphere down. Come on. It's feeling wonky. Then we bring God down. We keep trying to get up. Come on. I'm not trying to die yet. I want to bring God down. I want heaven to come to earth every day. Come on. But that takes me. That takes, that takes me bringing in and saying, God, I got to get my time now and bring you down. Come on. It's like an umbilical cord. Come on. God's feeding me, but how come I don't feed him back? God's filling me up. God's, man, God brings me up every day. Come on. But how come I don't bring the umbilical cord back and talk to him? Come on. It's, it goes both ways, church. It's a double-sided communication. Come on. As we all get on our feet, I'm going to close it up tonight. Come on. I want to retouch them in case you guys didn't get to write them down. It brings your freedom. It brings action. It brings revelation. It brings trust, and it brings your healing. 
as we all bow our heads. Oh, Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, that you're moving in this house, Father God, that you're setting an atmosphere, Father God, so strong, Father God, that people can, Father God, just walk by and feel it, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, that tonight we bring heaven down to you, Father God. That tonight we say, God, we need you here, Father God. God, I need my healing. I need my trust. I need my revelation, Father God. I need you to move in my life right now, Father God. Father God, right now, we, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father God. And we say, Father God, we're sorry, Father God, for the neglect that we brought to you, Father God. And we say, God, we bring it back to when it was just you and I. God, we bring it back to when you were moving, Father God, tonight. Tonight, Father God, we, we move, Father God. Look, church, tonight we want to come into an agreement with you with prayer. Because the Bible says that it is by your faith thou mountains shall move. So we're going to use your faith tonight to, to cast enemies away. To cast the, the doubt away. To cast the fear away. Church, the altar's open. My God's going to move tonight. But we got to bring it back to when it was just us and him. Church, the altar's open. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord oh,
My heart is yours forever. My heart is yours forever. My heart is yours forever. My heart, my mind, my soul. My heart is yours forever. My emotions are yours. My heart is yours.
Father God, tonight we give you praise, we give you glory and honor, Father God. Father God, tonight we thank you that you blessed us coming in, Father God, and that you will bless us coming out, Father God, that you will remove every distracted driver, Father God, that you will give us a blessed remainder of the week, Father God, that you will bless us all the way up until the next week, Father God. I thank you right now, Father God, that you will move and that you will have your way, Father God. We love you, Father God, until we meet again. We ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Living Word of Sparia family, we love you guys. We'd love to chit-chat and talk with you guys, but if not, we love you guys, and we'll see you guys on the next service around. God bless.